which woman wouldn't want a happy life? Having a joyful childhood and adolescence. Marrying the person she loves to build a family. However, not everyone is fortunate in that regard. She is Sada Abe. A geisha, remembered for molesting and mutilating her lover's genitalia. Her story became a national sensation in Japan, spiced with mystical undertones. Let's dive into the full story. Sada Abe was born on May 28, 1905, in Kanda, Tokyo, and was the seventh child among eight siblings. However, due to certain circumstances, only four of the eight siblings, including Sada, managed to survive into adulthood. Sada's father, Shigeyoshi, was actually adopted into the Abe family from Chiba Prefecture to assist in the family's tatami-making business, eventually inheriting the business himself. Sada's mother, Katsu, always allowed Sada to do whatever she wanted, considering her the youngest after the loss of four siblings. Katsu also encouraged Sada to take singing and shamisen lessons, a traditional Japanese three-stringed instrument. At that time, these activities were more associated with geisha and the world of prostitution than classical art. As a teenager, Sada started skipping school, dressing up, and hanging out with peers outside her home. This eventually led to Sada being coerced by her acquaintances when she was 14 years old. As time went on, Sada became increasingly difficult to control, so in 1922, her parents intentionally sold her to a geisha establishment in Yokohama, hoping she would find her own community there. Toku, Sada's older sister, admitted that Sada indeed wanted to become a geisha. At that time, being a geisha was seen as a glamorous celebrity lifestyle. However, Sada herself claimed that her father forced her into the geisha profession as a punishment for her involvement in activities related to promiscuity. In that establishment, Sada worked for five years until she contracted syphilis. This meant she had to undergo regular physical examinations, similar to what prostitutes legally had to do. Subsequently, she decided to pursue a career in prostitution with better pay. In the early 1930s, Sada began working as a prostitute in a district called Tobita in Osaka. However, she gained a reputation for causing trouble by stealing money from clients and attempting to escape. In 
In January 1933, Sada's mother passed away. This led her to travel to Tokyo to visit her father and her mother's grave. Exactly a year later, her father also passed away. While in Tokyo, Sada briefly worked at an illegal brothel and became a man's mistress for the first time. However, she was later arrested by the police because the brothel where she worked did not have a license. During her time in Tokyo, Sada got to know Kenosuke Kasahara, a close friend of the brothel owner. Kinosuke arranged for Sada's release as he was interested in her. With Sada's consent, Kinosuke made her his mistress, providing her with a place to live and a source of income in the form of money. Initially, Kinosuke often praised her. She's a strong woman. Even though I'm quite exhausted, she amazes me. She won't be satisfied unless we do it two, three, four times a night. For her, it's unacceptable unless my hands are on her intimate parts all night. At first, it was enjoyable, but after a few weeks, I got a bit tired. When Sada suggested to Kinosuke that he should leave his wife and marry her, Kinosuke refused. Later, when Sada asked Kinosuke to have another lover, he also declined. In the end, Sada decided to end her relationship with Kinosuke and fled to Nagoya. Feeling betrayed, Kinosuke then made a statement. She's a prostitute. What she has done makes everything clear. She's a woman every man should fear. Sada responded to Kinosuke's statement by saying, He doesn't love me and treats me like an animal. He's like a scoundrel who will beg me when I decide to end the relationship with him. In Nagoya, in 1935, Sada worked as a restaurant waitress and fell in love with a restaurant customer named Goro Omiya. Omiya was a professor and banker with aspirations of becoming a member of the Japanese parliament. Knowing that having sexual relations with restaurant customers was prohibited, Sada eventually returned to Tokyo. On February 1, 1936, she started working at a restaurant called Yoshidaya. The owner, Kichizo Ishida, aged 42, was known as a womanizer. Ishida admitted being interested in Sada and in mid-April, they had their first sexual encounter, accompanied by the romantic ballad played by one of the geishas also working at his restaurant. Then, on April 23rd, they met again and had another sexual encounter in a hotel in Shibuya. From then on, for two weeks, during Ishida's absence from his restaurant, they continued their activities in different places. Finally, on May 9th, Sada contemplated killing Ishida after he made her jealous by returning to his wife. On May 11th, Sada pawned some of her clothes and used the money to buy a kitchen knife. Then, she met Ishida, and both of them went to an area called Ogu. In Ogu, Sada and Ishida carried on with their usual activities. Sada would occasionally threaten Ishida not to cheat with other women while placing a knife near his private parts. During their activities, 
Sada also would sometimes choke Ishida using an obi, the sash used to tie a kimono. Ishida didn't mind, as it only heightened his excitement. On the early morning of May 18th, around 2 a.m., Sada choked Ishida while he was sound asleep until he eventually died. Sada even slept next to Ishida's lifeless body before using her kitchen knife to cut off his genitals and wrapping them in a magazine cover. Using blood, Sada wrote the phrase Sada, Ishida's joy, together alone, on Ishida's left thigh and above the bedsheet. Additionally, she carved her name on Ishida's left arm. After putting underwear on Ishida, Sada left the inn at 8 a.m., telling the innkeeper not to disturb Ishida. The next day, on May 19th, Sada went shopping and watched a movie. Even under an alias, she stayed at an inn in Shinagawa on May 20th. Sada spent the entire day writing letters to Omiya and Ishida. She planned to commit suicide a week after committing the murder and necrophilia with Ishida. At 4 p.m., the police visited Sada due to suspicions about her alias. Sada admitted who she was, but the police didn't believe her until she showed them Ishida's genitalia. Sada was eventually arrested and interrogated for more than eight sessions. When asked why she had Ishida's genitalia, Sada answered, Because I couldn't bring his head or body with me, I wanted to carry a part of him that could lead me to beautiful memories. And when asked why she killed Ishida, Sada responded, I loved him so much, I wanted him for myself. But we weren't husband and wife, and as long as he was alive, he would continue embracing other women. I knew that if I killed him, no other woman would touch him. So I killed him. Sada had her first trial on November 25th, 1936. Before receiving the court's verdict, she made a statement. One thing that makes me regret this incident is that I misunderstood the nature of sexual abuse. There has never been a man like Ishida. Even though there were some men I liked and willingly slept with without taking any money. But none of them could affect me like Ishida. Then, on December 21st, she was sentenced to prison for second-degree murder and mutilating a corpse. Sada was released on May 17, 1941. 